everybody and welcome to another Houdini tutorial. My name is Kate. I'm sorry if the audio is a little bit off. I'm just getting over a bad cold. So I apologize if it sounds a little weird. Uh, today we'll be talking about LUTs, how to create LUTs in Houdini. So a while back, and this is where the story of why I'm doing this tutorial, um, I got a studio tour in Toronto and it was my first time ever really meeting a colorist. And it kind of blew my mind a bit because I didn't really understand how big the coloring process was for movies and television shows and etc. And he just just had such a big impact on me that it made me want to research more into color grading and color correction. And here I am. Um, so I, after studying DaVinci Resolve a bit, I wanted to think about how I could apply this to Houdini. And it turns out Houdini does have... The network options available to create your own LUTs. So I'm going to show you that today. The first thing we want to go over though is how to understand the basics of the compositing network in Houdini. So if I was to delete all these, you can't actually anything unless you create your comp. So we're not going to actually be using the object network, we're going to be using the image network. So by creating an image network you have to create your comp, which is right here, and you open it up and it's empty. What you need to, the first thing you'll need to do is create a file. In this case, I already have an image loaded. It's of this cute little kitty and you're going to switch over to your compositing view. This is a little kitty who was in our office today. He was an absolute joy. Um, and there he is sleeping in someone's slipper. Um, so the first thing we're going to look over there are these buttons down here, which is your red channel, your green channel, your blue channel, and your alpha channel. In this case, here's the red channel, here's the blue channel, here's the blue channel, green channel, red channel, all the channels, and the alpha channel. There is no alpha channel in this image, so no alpha channel appears. The other thing we can look at is that you can switch between the brightness and the contrast for your alpha channels and the white and black points. Um, the other thing that is most important while you're doing color correction in Houdini is the first thing is when you create a color correction node, you'll notice something appearing up at the top here. Open this up, you'll get a bunch of parameters that you can use, such as a histogram of your image, timeline, and the image itself. Show color curves will also appear, and this is a visualization of the colors that we already talked about down here, up in a little viewport. So you can skim through them, and you can also visualize your highlights, your midtones, your shadows, and all. So here we'll start. We'll start, and we won't use Little Kitty for now. Well, actually, we'll use Little Kitty. Just to explain another thing that we'll be able to do, down here you may see a little table button. If you click it and turn it on, it will add LUTs to your scene. As you can see, I've already have a LUT in my scene that's evidently not the correct LUT. Uh, but if we load another LUT, so it's, let's say test two, no, test cats was the proper one. You can see this is LUT, no LUT. And this is a lot. Not a correct lot for the scene, but a, a correct lot for another image I was working for prior. Always remember, if you're experimenting with your created LUTs, to click this off if you're creating a new one. You do not want to be building a LUT already on top of another LUT. You can run into a lot of mistakes. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a, get a new image. So I'm going to go to my desktop. And I think... I'm going to choose my two kitty cats. There we go. There's my little fluffies. This is Snowy. This is Tiger. She's 11. She's 5. And she's a fat one. <laughs> so we're going to first... I like to degrain my image before I do anything. Simply because I can get a better result that way. And there's no noise affecting my color channels. Most of the time in images, you'll see a lot 
of noise appearing in the blue channel. Uh, you can't see it because I have degrading picked off, but in this particular image, there was, I think, a little bit more in the green channel. But anyway, after you degrain your image, I would recommend getting a color correction node and plugging this in. The one thing that you will notice about most of the nodes in the network, in compositing network, is the mass node. In the mass node, you have the options to plain scope the image and choose which um, scope you want to work on, whether or not you want to be working on all channels, the red channel, the green channel, or your blue channel. In this case, I only like, I, I like to, when I'm creating a LUT, I like to use three color correction nodes, one for my red, blue, green, and then some different variable nodes that can help me tone down the brightness of my image. So in this case, before I even touch the color correction node, I'm going to rename this one red. Blue. And green. I'm going to put my thing down there. Green, blue, and red. Awesome. The other thing I'm going to do is put a contrast now before my color correction nodes. And I'm once again, you see your red, blue, green alpha channels, and you have the option of correcting them. So let's see what ha happens. Could be a little bit too much blue. And you can fix it like that. Hold around my component 4 for a while, see what happens. You can also add a gamma if you'd like. Makes the image brighter or darker. In this case, I'd like my image a little bit darker, but not too dark. So you can do 45. Nope. Too dark. And now we'll dive into our color correction. So our correct color. Can do our multipliers. I like the inter in this case while I'm operating on my colors. I'm going to actually look at my highlights more than I'm going to look at my actual image. Down. Interesting. And you'll see those change over time.
and just work away until you feel happy with it. In this case, you may go, oh no, I forget what my original image looks like. So what can we do? We can select all of our nodes or the ones we'd like to view and press the blue button. And the image with multiple passes will appear. All you have to do is remember which node you're on. So in this case, our bottom node is green. So green looks like this. And then our original image is a little bit more warm. In this case, I'm a little bit happy of how this LUT turned out. So now we're going to save our LUT. So right click on your last color correction node. You have to have a color correction node at the end of your LUT image, your, uh, your LUT tree. Um, and just right click on it, hit save, go to LUT, go to here, go to your chosen file directory, name your LUT, and all LUTs end with BLUT as the file extension. Save. And then to go back to a regular view, hit this button. And just to see if it actually works, we'll delete our entire tree, go to our original image, load a LUT, choose our LUT, click accept, and there we go. There's building a LUT in Houdini. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye!